In this video, we will discuss how to estimate population proportions when sampling from a finite population and also illustrate how to calculate 95% confidence intervals for population proportions. Now just a reminder, we can label our population as capital U, which is a set of each element, little u, 1, all the way up to little u, capital N. And those are the elements of our population. Now suppose we're interested in a subset of u, so a subset of our population. And we'll label that subset as UD. And capital ND is the size of the subset of the population that we're interested in. So for example, we may be interested in the proportion of the UK population who are going to vote for the Labour Party at the next election, or for example, the proportion of cattle that are pregnant on a large farm. So it's often assumed that we know the population size N, but we don't know the population size of the subset that we're interested in capital ND. So let's have a look at an example to discuss this. So suppose we're looking at the proportion of cattle that are pregnant on a large farm. Now suppose that the cows here are your population. The red cows are cows that are pregnant and the blue cows are the cows that aren't pregnant. Now suppose we take a sample of this population. So we have a population size of 30 and we've taken a sample of 10. And if we look at that sample in more detail, we can get some information from that sample. So first of all, ND, which is the sample size of the population that we're interested in, so the sample size of the pregnant cows, is equal to 4. And we can also label our data as YDI, where YDI is an indicator variable which takes the value 1 when the, sample, the element in the sample takes... Um, a value of the population we're interested in and zero otherwise. So for example, if the cow is pregnant, YDI will be one. And if the cow isn't pregnant, then YDI will be zero. And you can see that that's written down here for the sample that we have in this example. Now we can also calculate the population proportion or the population mean for this sample. And that is just the sum of YI divided by N. And that will just be equal to the number of pregnant cows divided by the total sample size, so 4 divided by n. And we label that as p hat d. That's the estimate of the population proportion that we're interested in. And as I said, we can calculate that for our example to get 0 0.4. Now we can also calculate the variance of that population proportion. So remember that we are, because we have a sample, we don't have data from the whole population. We need to calculate how sure we are about that estimate of the population proportion. And to do so, we can use the variance of the population proportion. And if you look in your notes, you should find the formula for this, which is just equal to one minus the sampling fraction, which remember is little n over big N, multiplied by the estimate of the population proportion, p hat d, multiplied by q d, q hat d, which is 1 minus p hat d, all divided by n minus 1. So you'll notice we have all of these values for our example. So we can calculate this just by substituting in those values. So our sampling fraction, little n over big n, is 10 over 30. P hat D is the proportion of pregnant cows that we had in our sample, which was 0 0.4. Q hat D is 1 minus 0 0.4, so that's 0 0.6, all divided by N minus 1, which is 9. And that should give you an estimate of the variance of the population proportion of 0 0.0178. And that gives us an idea of how sure we are about the estimate of the population proportion that we've calculated for this sample. So we've just calculated an estimate for the population proportion and also an estimate for the variance of the population proportion. Now let's have a look at confidence intervals for proportions. So if you think about how we draw our sample, each time we select an element from the population to be in our sample, we don't replace it, so we're sampling without replacement. So although it, the, the whole um, series of drawing elements to be in our sample, 
Looks like it could be from a binomial distribution where you have n trials, which is the sample size, and you're, every time you're drawing someone, you have a probability of them being in your population of interest, so the subset that we're looking at is equal to a certain value. There's one key difference here, and that is that we're sampling without replacement. So that means that we're not, we don't have independent trials here, which is what we need to be for our binomial distribution. So although it looks very similar to a binomial distribution, just bear in mind that we're sampling without replacement, so that independence assumption is violated. However, when our sample size is much smaller than the population size of our subset, and much smaller than the population size total, we can actually estimate the number of elements in our sample from our population of interest, or our subset, as a binomial distribution with parameter n and nd divided by capital N. And now we want to try and construct a confidence interval for this estimate of the population proportion. And to do that, we can actually use the central limit theorem to approximate our binomial distribution by the normal distribution. And just a reminder, when your random variable x follows a binomial distribution with parameters n and theta, that can be approximated by a normal distribution with mean parameter n theta and variance parameter n theta, 1 minus theta. So you're really beginning to see how important and how crucial the, the central limit theorem is in statistics because it can allow us to do things like this. Now just a, a small note, because we have this lack of replacement in our distribution, we don't have this independence, we're not going to use this exact approximation here, we're going to use one that's slightly different, but you don't have to worry about the details of that for the purposes of this course. So to get a feel for what that looks like, let's have a look at our sampling distribution for our population proportion. So we'll go back to our cattle example, but now suppose that our population size is 300, our sample size is 100, and suppose we also know the true population proportion, and that's equal to 0 0.4. So 0 0.4% of, or sorry, 0 0.4, um, the proportion of cows that are pregnant on the farm is 0 0.4. So suppose we can draw one sample from this population and the sample is shown here. So we have again some red cows which are pregnant, the blue cows which aren't and we can then estimate the population proportion using this sample of 100 cows. And if you were to do that you would get an estimate of 0 0.42. So you can see that I've plotted that estimate of the population proportion on this graph where the true population proportion is labelled or is shown as the red vertical line, 0 0.4. So this one sits just to the right of our true population proportion. Now suppose we take a second sample and again we compute the population, the estimate of the population proportion. So this time our estimate was 0 0.37 and again I've plotted that on the graph. Suppose we do that again and we, uh, we take 10 samples in total and each time we take a sample we compute the estimate of the population proportion and plot it on this graph as shown here. Now suppose we do it 100 times, 500 times and 1000 times and you can see that as the number of samples increase the population proportion sampling distribution looks more and more like a normal curve. We have this bell shaped curve which is symmetric around the true population proportion size of 0 0.4. So you can see that our sampling distribution for our population proportion does in fact follow a normal distribution as the number of samples increases. And that's exactly what the central limit theorem told us back in week 8. So now suppose we want to calculate our confidence interval for our population proportion for sample 1. So we have this sample of cows, we've estimated our population proportion to be 0 0.42, let's compute a 95% confidence interval. So you should get the, the formula for that confidence interval in your notes, and that should be equal to p hat d, so the estimate of our population proportion, plus or minus our standard normal value, evaluated at 1 minus alpha over 2, multiplied by the square root of 1 minus our sampling fraction, multiplied by our estimate of our population proportion, multiplied by 1 minus the estimate of our population proportion, q hat d, all divided 
by n minus 1. So you should recognise this as the estimate of the variance of our population proportion that we looked at a few slides ago. And hopefully as well you can see that we have all the information that we need. One thing to, um, to ha we have to pick is the size of alpha. We want to compute a 95% confidence interval here. So alpha is going to be equal to 0 0.05. That's just another thing to bear in mind. So we can now substitute in all these values to compute our 95% confidence interval. So the estimate of our population proportion is 0 0.42, plus or minus. This value here evaluated when alpha is 0 0.05. If you look that up in the standard normal distribution tables, you should just get 1.96. And that's multiplied by 1 minus our sampling fraction, which is 100 over 300, or 1 third. The estimate of our population proportion, 0 0.42. The estimate of 1 minus our population proportion, 0 0.58. All divided by n minus 1, which is 99. And then again, keep just working through this. If you evaluate this here, you should get 0 0.0794. And then we can use these values to get our confidence interval. 0 0.3406 and 0 0.499. So what this tells us is it's highly likely that the true population proportion will lie within this interval here. So our true population proportion will lie somewhere between 0 0.3406 and 0 0.4994. And actually in this case, we know the true population proportion. That was 0 0.4. So you can see that the true population, sorry, the true population proportion does in fact lie within this interval.